For the first time in human history, we are using the latest imaging techniques to show how our brain works and how a seamless connection between brain and machine will be achieved. The Spanish psychologist Jose Delgado is considered the pioneer of brain implants. As early as the 1940s, he used brain-computer interfaces in monkeys and was able to transform aggressive primates into peaceful ones by using his remote control. Could such devices also be used to prevent wars and other atrocities? And should we be able to end a fight at the touch of a button? To understand how brain-computer interfaces of past and present work, we need to understand how the human brain works. The brain is basically made up of white and gray matter. Gray matter refers to areas of the brain that primarily contain nerve cell bodies. These nerve cell bodies communicate with each other with the help of nerve fibers, which can be recognized as white matter due to their white color. Let's go inside our brain and visualize only some of the nerve cell bodies as small dots. These nerve cell bodies communicate via the mentioned nerve fibers using electrical impulses. The action potentials are basically the language of the nerve cells. Nerve cells have a cell body with a cell nucleus, an axon with its axon hillock and dendrites with an incredible number of spines. With the help of the spines, the nerve cell receives signals from many other neurons. The connection between the spine and the end of an axon is called synapse. The action potentials of other neurons reach the axon hillock via the dendrites. If the total of all incoming action potentials exceeds a certain value, the nerve cell transmits its signal to other neurons via its axon. These processes occur countless times per second, not only in our brain, but in our entire body. Numerous areas in the brain are responsible for the voluntary movement of the body. One of the most important areas is the motor cortex. In this region, certain nerve cells are responsible for the movement of individual body parts. For this reason, a brain-computer implant only needs to be placed in the proper position to be able to perform rudimentary movements. An external device can then be connected to the implant. This allows currents to be generated, which then stimulate the relevant area of the brain. This ultimately leads to movement of the body part. Instead of stimulating brain activity, many companies are focusing on measuring it. For example, using a Utah array, which consists of different numbers of needles with electrodes. Each individual electrode is connected to a connecting piece by a thin wire. The connecting piece is usually screwed tightly to the skull using screws. It possesses contacts in the upper area so that a head stage can process the voltages recorded by the electrodes. Additional wires and electrodes, such as reference electrodes, have been omitted for the sake of simplicity. The needles are inserted into the cerebral cortex, that is, the outer layer of neural tissue of the cerebrum.
Here, we can see only a few of the many nerve cells that communicate via electrical impulses. One electrode usually covers an area of several neurons. The voltages recorded by the electrodes can be seen here. The action potentials of the neurons, which can be seen here as downward deflections, are often used for further processing. Today, head stages are able to process data for over 100 electrodes in real time and send them wirelessly to another processing unit. This means that a person with paraplegia only has to think about moving a finger. This creates patterns that can then be converted into movements of a robot arm. In this way, a robot can be controlled using the person's own thoughts. While Utah arrays only have electrodes on the tips, the Neuralink N1 has many electrodes attached to an ultra-thin thread. Such a thread is thinner than a human hair. The housing is made of biocompatible material. Underneath is a battery that can be charged wirelessly at night. The computing unit processes the information received from the electrodes and transmits it wirelessly to a smartphone or other devices. The 64 elastic threads, which have a total of 1,024 electrodes, are inserted into the brain by a robot with micrometer precision. Once this process is complete, the N1 is fixed in the skull in such a way that it is no longer visible. With the help of the N1, it is possible to navigate a mouse pointer on a screen or control a smartphone. But in the near future, it should be possible to let people walk again. For people with paraplegia, such chips could help to bridge the nerve fibers destroyed in an accident. This would allow the brain's action potentials to reach the muscles. Prostheses will have motors and sensors that communicate with the respective areas of the brain via chips. In the future, People with prostheses will have incredible abilities and strength. Another method is used by the company Synchron. A stentrode is inserted through a vein in the neck using a catheter. This stentrode possesses electrodes and is placed next to the motor cortex. Here we see the blue catheter with which the stentrode is inserted. The electrodes of the stentrode then transmit the voltages arriving in the blood vessel to a chip in the chest using a cable. This chip can then transmit the data wirelessly to external devices. Synchron is also experimenting with exoskeletons. The motors of the exoskeleton can be controlled by thought. In the future, people with paralyzed legs could walk again. In our obsession of faster, higher, and stronger, do we become more and more a machine ourselves? 
are we replacing weak flesh with hard metal step by step in order to be stronger and more resilient? And will we ask ourselves the question, when is a human being no longer a human being?